Well, hello, friends. My name is Jed Dorsey here on behalf of Blick Art Materials, and um, I am very excited to uh, be here together with you. Ashley, I don't know if the screen is pinned. Um, it looks like it might be on uh, your static image there. But anyways, uh, we're getting going here, and this is going to be a really fun time. And um, if you know, I love painting outside. It's something that I didn't really do that much of until um, not too long ago. Um, but I, I uh, started getting involved in about five years ago, I'd say, and it really started transforming the way that I paint and the way that I um, view uh, art because it's such an important part of, of painting. And um, so um, the, uh, the uh, okay, I'm just, I'm going to let you know, you can ask questions, even though I'm the only voice that you'll hear, we have other people here moderating. And so they're going to let me know questions. So please feel free to ask questions. I'm going to show you my setup. And we're going to look at a scene that I did paint live on location not that long ago. And I'll give you um, a link where you can actually see that um, as I painted it live on location. And here's the deal. Painting live on location, if you've done it before, you know that there are some unique challenges that happen when you are um, doing that. Because it's like you actually have changing conditions that you're adjusting your painting to. So there's a lot of things that we can talk about as we go today, but I'm gonna show you kind of our setup um, and you'll be able to see a little bit here about uh, what we're doing. Now, if you look at the, the, the setup here, um, I'll show you some of my colors basically here is a similar palette to what I use when I go outside because I like to limit the colors that I have to bring. So I'm gonna take titanium white, this is Mars black, ultramarine blue, this is quinacridone red, and this is cadmium yellow light. I'm gonna be painting on a black surface today, um, which if I was outside, um, I sometimes will paint on a black surface like this or Oftentimes, I'll also paint on a gray surface, um, but I think that I, I did my other demo on a gray one, so I thought I'd switch it up this time. Um, when you go to the YouTube link, you might, you might actually see um, what I mean. And if you do want to, you can see where um, on Dick uh, Blick Art Materials page there, you'll see that I have, I'm a featured artist, one of the featured artists, and you really ought to go check that out because there are a lot of really great um, things that you can discover on their featured artists page where they have a lot of, a lot of great artists. Um, and I was actually just noticing that a good friend of mine is on there um, from Indiana. So pretty cool. Now, um, one, of the, one of the things that I, as I was saying, um, if you go to, uh, um, my YouTube page, you'll see that this exact scene that I'm going to paint today is one that I painted live and we recorded. And you'll see that as, as I'm painting in that scene, it, it, the colors are going to shift or the, the light is going to change. The sun kind of goes behind clouds and then it comes back out. And why is it so important to learn how to paint um, outside is because you actually get to observe things in a lot of, a lot of, uh, more accurate, your eyes are actually better at perceiving light and values and things like that than, than uh, a camera is. So I have adjusted this reference photo that we're looking at right here a little bit. I, I actually lightened the shadows a little bit and I brought up the values just, just slightly so that it would more accurately reflect what it was like that day. And it's important to know um, how to do that because um, like I say, if you just are using a reference photo without any knowledge of what it looks like outside, you will probably end up with, uh, if you don't adjust it, the, the values will be off a little bit and your painting will um, tend towards um, 
usually it, it pushes the shadows a little darker than they than they really are and um, things like that. So I'm going to get going on this and and we'll just we'll just start uh, start right in. And like I said, if you have any questions, um, make sure to ask and I will um, I will be able to see them and and we'll talk about that um, as I'm going. So one of the one of the important things here with with um, for me with painting is is really just getting started. You can see if you if you can see I, I did a quick sketch onto this um, my canvas with some of the shapes and and uh, just the the objects that are on there because I wanted to be able to paint as kind of as quickly as possible. Um, because like I said, if you're painting outside, one of the challenges that you face is changing light and changing, um, yeah, just the conditions. It's mostly just changing light. There's not that many more things that happen in there besides the changing of light, but it can happen uh, really quickly and it can change the whole, um, the feel of the day. Um, you also have to deal with things like um, weather, you know, you might have rain come when you weren't expecting it. You may have um, things like bugs and, you know, critters that are trying to eat you or something like that. So, so it's always good to think about where you're going when you're going outside um, and make sure that you're prepared for it. And sometimes bringing a little bit of extra um, supplies is wise, like uh, bug spray, you know, um, just just things like that that you you might not necessarily think about uh, because they're not always painting supplies, but um, you, they're really helpful to have when you're out there. Um, and as we're getting some of this, um, some of this going in terms of this, you'll see that I'm, I'm basically working kind of from, from the um, background, I mean, from the foreground to the background, I'll often just start getting things set in. And um, it may not be in the order that you're used to. You also might notice that in this, even in this reference photo, it doesn't seem like there's too much color. And that was really what happened that day. The, the light was coming from behind and it was, it was creating a, um, a, a fairly muted color palette because it was, it was almost like it had, um, I don't know the effect or why it exactly was doing it, but it was not a lot of vibrant colors because they were tending to get washed out a little bit because of the dazzling sunlight. So um, as I'm going here, I'm, I'm going to be thinking quite a bit about the values and um, trying to stick with them as closely as I can. And I, I see that question, Aomi, about what exactly inspires me to paint. Now, in this case, I, you know, when you go outside, um, either if I'm, even if I'm just taking reference photos, the thing that, if there was just one, one thing that I could say that probably envelops every choice that I have ever made, I would say that it's light. And if I'm, you know, intrigued by the lighting of the day, um, it's probably a good chance that I would be interested in, in painting a, a subject. So that's why a lot of times it doesn't matter so much to me about what the exact subject is. It's more about the lighting on the subject because I've found that 
even boring or things that you wouldn't necessarily think are going to make a good subject can be quite interesting if the lighting is, is um, either portrayed interestingly or if, if it is interesting, you know, in the, because I, I know that there are artists, I've seen artists take subjects that aren't even lit very well and, uh, but they, they like the shape of the, the object, whatever it is, maybe it's a barn or something like that. And they can take that and create interesting lighting. But that's the most overarching thing for me that causes me to want to paint something. And again, mostly as I'm painting, I'm thinking about light as it hits a surface. And um, if you think about the, there's a, there's kind of a, a canopy, like a, uh, tarp that is pulled up over this, this sailboat right here. And it's kind of, you know, you can see a little bit of light reflecting off the top. And there's another line that goes straight down here. And there's a few, few variations on this side of it. And then the underside, though, is very dark, right? Like, you don't really see very much underneath it. And, and so, um, these areas down here are going to be sheltered from the, the light and they're not going to look very lit up at all, even though it's, it is, uh, white, <laughs> you know, um, when we paint this shiny light back here on that reflected water, we need to make sure that these values that are in here don't compete with that um, in any way because the, the lighting in the, that very back area is going to be by far our lightest highlight. So really, in some ways, all that you can ever paint is light. And that's why painting outside can be so tricky because it is a, a case of kind of changing light and limited amount of time to capture what the scene shows. And um, as we were thinking about this, this demonstration today, uh, we, we are hoping that we can get a, a live, either a, a live uh, demonstration done on location sometime in the future. Um, that's kind of the goal. Yeah, it's, it's a little you know, tricky to get that because of technology um, and figuring out how all that could work, but you can stay tuned to uh, Blick and um, because we're going to be working on that and seeing if we can make something like that happen in the future. And for now, um, we are reliving this plein air adventure um, as we as we paint together today. So, yeah, if you're again, if you have questions or you want to hear any anything in particular about plein air painting or you want to like understand it a little bit more please write your questions out in the chat because we are able to um, answer your questions today another thing that happens when you paint outside that i always think is kind of interesting is that you you generally attract some interest from other people and so you have people who, who will stop and they either are asking questions about what you're doing and they kind of are curious. A lot of people haven't ever really seen a, an artist in action um, or just very rarely. So 
you know, you, if you, if you want to paint outside, you kind of have to be prepared a little bit for um, interacting with people and seeing, allowing them to see what you're doing. Uh, at least if you're going to go to a public place like I was here when I was painting this scene. Um, and I always find it kind of, kind of interesting and kind of fun. Now, when I was there and I was painting this scene because we were actually recording a video, um, again, which you can see on our YouTube page, if you go to youtube.com and do forward slash Jed Dorsey, you will see uh, this is this is one of the videos down on the page, just down a little ways. But uh, I was recording, so I felt kind of bad because I wasn't able to stop and talk with uh, a few of the people that, that came by. But in general, when I'm out, I'll take the time to stop and, and chat with people a little bit because, again, like I said, they're always kind of interested in you know, talking to an artist and seeing a little bit of the process. Now, this, this boat um, is white, of course, but the, the way that this, um, you know, in the, in the shadow and everything, it, it, I remember thinking about it and thinking, oh, what color is that? And then looking down in the water and seeing um, a little bit of variation in some, some kind of teal, blue, green kind of colors, but it was, it was fairly muted again because of the, because of the brilliant light and how, how um, it kind of limited the saturation of the colors. But we want to have uh, when we when we see this kind of thing, we're we're, we're going to get some reflection both ways. Um, we're going to have some reflection of the the color of the boat down in the water, of course. But we're also going to get a little bit of the reflection of the water onto the side of the boat. And I'm kind of concentrating on the boat in this area because once that part is, is in and um, established, you can move out from there. And when you're painting outside, one of the things that is helpful to do is to choose just choose a time, kind of look at the lighting and if things are shifting around a little bit, sometimes you just have to choose right now, you know, just kind of take a mental snapshot of what the lighting looks like at a particular moment. If, if you need to, sometimes you can take a, take a photograph with your phone or something like that, just so that you have a snapshot of exactly where the shadows were or what the lighting was. Um, or else you end up trying to paint um, the light as the sun is shifting and different things like that, which is impossible because you'll end up changing the painting completely because if you're out there for any length of time, like you have about three hour window, but even within three hours of painting, I mean, most, most artists say you have three hours. That's kind of tops before the lighting is gonna to change too much. Uh, and you won't even uh, really recognize the, the shadows in, in anything like they were before. So if you have a, a length of time like that, um, you basically are gonna be choosing 
what the light is at your optimal, kind of like what the optimal light is. And then from there, you're going to base everything else on that, that. So that means the lighting will be similar and coherent, like it'll all make sense. You won't have, for instance, the light coming from that side behind the boat in one part of the painting, but the light coming from this angle in another part of the painting because you're tying them together. Okay, so I do see a couple other questions in here. Do I paint on a black canvas even when painting plain air? And um, yes, sometimes I do. I don't all the time. Like I, I was saying at the very beginning uh, is that sometimes I'll paint on a gray canvas outside. If I was just choosing one color that I, if I, if I had to choose one color to paint on for the rest of my life outside, I would probably choose gray because it's a neutral color and it can go kind of in a lot of different directions. Um, it's not going to, it's not going to be too, too bright. It's not going to be too dark. It's not going to be, you know, any of the other things that I would find every once in a while, like black is good, but gray is a little bit more versatile. You know, you might want to paint a really bright on a bright background sometime, but sometime that really bright background might be too bright. So that's why if I just had to choose one color, I'd, I'd probably pick gray. Now that value right there is a little bit too light. I need to make that a little darker. Uh, and I'm going to bring up the, I'm going to take, there's a, actually a guy sitting kneeling here and I'm not going to put him in. There's enough, enough kind of challenging things to draw in and put in without putting a person in. So I'm just going to leave them out right now. That's something that you kind of want to be careful of. Also, when you paint outside, I've painted people in plein air situations quite a few times, but it's, it's something that you have to really feel okay about just getting a very, very quick gestural kind of brush mark down. <laughs> Cause you basically have about 10 seconds often before somebody moves and changes their position. I mean, you get really lucky every once in a while where somebody happens to be sitting or, you know, something where they stay stationary. But most of the time I find like, even in situations where I'm hoping somebody stays, they end up moving before I would want them to. So you want to be pretty careful with putting people in because they will move on you. So you have to act really decisively, really quickly and hope for the best. Okay, and um, I see another question about what panels, sizes, and paints do I like to use? Or no, panels, I guess just panels. Um, I tend to go with these lightweight kind of canvas panels because they are, they are thin and they, they um, can stack easily and because they're hard and you can't, you can't puncture them. 
as easily um, as you can at Canvas. So that's, that's what I like to use. And the sizes are generally, um, I'll paint up to a 18 by 24. I have painted as, as big as a 24 by 36 outside in one sitting and that's pushing it for me. Um, the 18 by 24 is a pretty good size in terms of if I'm wanting to paint something big, that's, that's a big enough stretch for me. Most of the time, if I was just doing a little painting, I'd probably choose 12 by 16, something like that. That's pretty, pretty reasonable. The one that I did in the, where this scene was originally was a 10 by 10, I believe. So even smaller. And it was nice because I was able to get it done pretty quickly. Um, so I just remembered that this, this post has a little cone on top. Not sure if I want the cone or not, but I'll put it there right now. We'll see. And I see another question here about what paints do I use? And uh, asking if I'm still using Utrecht paints or have I changed? And I will say something about that. I do love Utrecht paints. Um, they're great. Um, what I've been using a little bit more recently has been some Windsor and Newton paints. Um, the professional grade Windsor Newton because um, they tend to have less color shift than, than uh, pretty much any, any other of the paints that I've used. But you have to get the professional grade, but they have a unique, um, I think it's the binder is, is kind of a, unique clear binder that they have and it doesn't shift or however it works it, it tends to keep the the color as close to what it was when you put it down so that's that's what I'm I'm using the most and um, what I use to keep my paints wet when I'm outside is I use a stay wet palette so so this is a stay wet palette. This is the bottom part and this is the top part. Um, obviously it's very old and used, but inside of it is what this is. So this is the most important part is this paper that goes on top and the paper looks like this and you can put something underneath, like I have just paper towels under there, but it also comes, if you get the palette, it will come with a sponge and the sponge is filled with water, or in my case, the paper towel is filled with water. And when um, it's wet, this paper will soak up the water and it will kind of make the paint stay wet. So I have a, a setup where I can use this outside in my box and then I can put the, the paint on or I, 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 I can put the lid on there. I also, when I'm outside, I, I use these paint boxes. Um, it's just a bead box, but I fill these up with, with paint uh, I go out and I miss the top of them. I would say that in general, acrylic paints are great for painting outside. If you live in a place like Arizona or some kind of desert type of climate, it will still prove to be tricky um, because it's so dry there. It's so hot that It'll, it'll, it just means 
you, you're going to have to be extra, extra careful and extra, you know, vid, vigilant about making the, making your paints moist and keeping them saturated, like spraying them and things like that. Those would be the hardest climates to use acrylic paints outside. But if it's any, anywhere else, um, acrylic paints are actually really great for, for outdoor painting. And even in those climates, I mean, I've painted lots of times in climates that, that you would not necessarily expect acrylics to, to be good. And they have been, they've been great, even in, in places where it's, it's like really quite hot. It's pretty dry. Um, one of the interesting things was that I remember painting up in Canada at, at an event that uh, it was, it was in the winter or at least it was snowy. It was in the fall, but it was, there was snow on the ground and I didn't expect it, but the, because the, the wet weather, the air was so dry there, it actually was drying up my paint kind of like it would in the summer in a warm climate. So more than anything, it has to do with the humidity or the lack of humidity in the air uh, and how quickly your paints will dry out. But that's how I do it outside. Um, what do I think of gesso? I see that question. I assume you can't use it on a black canvas. Well, actually this is not a black canvas so much as it is just a canvas that I used black gesso on. And so trying to show you my black gesso here, if you want, this is just from golden black gesso. So you can, you can create a black canvas. That's all I did. Is there anything special to do to prepare your boards for outdoor painting? No, not really. Um, as long as you've, you know, have a decent, decent uh, board and set up, um, you really should be able to paint outside without much of a change in your canvases or your panels or anything like that. The main thing is, you know, making sure that you're able to transport them, you know, without them maybe rubbing against each other too much or that kind of thing, because you, you just want to keep the integrity of the paint there. But generally it's, it's not um, going to be any, really any different than, than if you were painting inside same process of painting and everything like that. But good questions. So, and then there, I see another question here about the, does, do I paint directly on the black gesso and are there various qualities of gesso? So, there are different qualities because um, just like paint, um, you know, there's some that are more made for professional or, you know, artist quality. And then there's more, some that are more geared for inexpensive or student grade, you know, work. And it's not that it's wrong to use one or, you know, right to use the other, but you will get a, a bit of what you pay for. So if you're, you know, using a more, less expensive gesso, generally you'll, you'll get something that's thinner and that kind of thing. What I, I showed you the golden for my black gesso, but my, 
my uh, go-to for normal white gesso is Utrecht. It is very thick and I really like it. I like it just quite a bit. I don't, I don't do any, like I don't water it down or lighten it or anything like that. I just use it straight up as it is. And um, it's, a, it's a really, really nice gesso. That's, that's what I, I recommend um, more than anything because it, it will, um, it'll create a bit of texture on your canvas which I like a lot. So I guess if you're not wanting to get that texture, you wouldn't want to use it. But for what I do, I, I really, I really do like that. So again, another good question. Now, as I'm going, I'm trying to pay attention again to a lot lot here is looking at the values of this as I'm going and um, this down at the very bottom there is actually pretty dark a little darker than what I had so I'm adjusting that down a little bit here. Okay. Now, due to the fact that we're talking about plein air painting and we're talking about um, like what it's like and the constraints of plein air painting things like that. I'm going to be painting with a very distinct time limit today. So we're going to be here for one hour exactly. And that's a imposed deadline for us right now because I'm not technically outside and that, but because of, you know, the idea of planar painting, I think it's actually really good. So if you are trying to prepare yourself, if you've never really painted outside or you've done it a little bit, but you found it challenging in the past and you wanna get better at it, one really good way to start is just by setting deadlines for yourself when, when you're just painting normal. So you might just say, okay, I've got one hour to do this painting. And no matter what, I'm, I'm going to be done in one hour and, and that's it, right? You just kind of, it might feel arbitrary, it might feel forced at first, but if you can do that, you're going to, you're going to learn a little bit about painting with speed and efficiency, and you're going to prepare yourself for when you actually are outside because you'll be at least a little bit used to that speed. There's gonna be other things that will be difficult like the changing lighting and stuff like that, that it'll be a little bit more difficult to prepare yourself for, but at least getting some of that speed down will be helpful. When I'm painting outside, I do see a question here about, do I use more, more water? And I guess it depends on what you're talking about, but I think you're talking about, well, I think you're talking about um, spraying on here. I, I don't know for sure. I don't know if I use any more water in my brush, like cleaning my brush or anything like that. I, I don't think I do. I think it's pretty much the same, but I do use a spray bottle a lot when I'm outside. So I'll be spraying, not necessarily my palette all the time, but my paint box that I would have, I would spray that a lot. And I would also spray the palette, but my palette, if I'm using a paint box, it's gonna, it's gonna feel a little bit different because I'm not gonna be mixing 
my uh, colors in the same way. I won't have these big um, piles of paint down here. So I'm starting to feel a little bit of the pressure of the time limit. So I'm going to be trying to move fairly quickly. And it might end up feeling a little bit more like it would on a plein air painting day where I'm using much broader brush strokes and kind of quicker brush strokes. One of the abilities that you want to develop as you paint outside is to paint really directly. And by that, I just mean you are not overthinking things. You're simply looking, you're seeing the colors, the values, and you're you're putting them down. You're just like I'm doing right now. I'm not overthinking these brush strokes. I'm just saying, okay, lighter, darker, you know, warmer, cooler. What is it? Trying to mix it really quickly and put these brush strokes down and convey, you know, the the lighting and some of those things as quickly and efficiently as possible. And really, when, when I get into that mode, um, what I end up thinking the most about, of course, is values. I'm not worried as much about what exact color the like the hue of what I'm putting down is I'm thinking way more about how bright that color is and I'm trying my best to get it close in terms of the the color the hue but it's a little bit secondary to what is the What is the value of that color? So I'm gonna come in right now and I'm gonna put in some of my brightest bright in here. And it's going to hopefully help me see and adjust all the other values. And I would encourage you to go back and if you haven't seen the other video where I paint this live, you'll see how um, how tricky it was for me when I was trying to get the lighting to to kind of cooperate or you know like when I was choosing what what lighting I was going to be trying to trying to show and so far what you can see from what i've done is i've i've actually stuck pretty pretty close to what the what the colors were this day i'm not making really many changes or variations in this and i find i mean I, that's an intentional thing because if you know me i do paint with a fair amount of color and um, sometimes it becomes an exaggerated thing or I just will shift 
things a little bit here and there. But when I'm outside, I'm generally not doing quite as much of that. And I think a lot of it is because it takes such effort to, to um, kind of see what's there and, and grab those colors and try to make it look accurate that I, I tend to just be a little bit more true to what I see. And I am a little bit less imaginative with the colors and things like that. That doesn't mean that you can't change the colors, it just means that one of the reasons that I think it's challenging to is that you're, you're already dealing with a little bit less time. But I kind of like still doing a little bit of exaggeration in colors. And that's generally what I tend to do on a planar painting is that I may not change things completely, but I'll, I'll generally try to exaggerate things a little bit. And so as we're going, I'm, I'm just gonna start paying attention to, is there anything that I can do that on here? And there's still a lot of stuff in here that I haven't even really touched on. Like I don't even really have any of this back here in. It's because I was relaxing a little too much at the beginning of this. Okay. And maybe I'll put in whoopsie. can tell that there's water underneath this because it's saturating that so much that it uh, <laughs> was slipping down. Okay, and do you premix more colors when planar painting? Uh, no, not really. Um, I don't really ever premix colors, although I know it's a very, it's probably a smart thing to do, and I know a lot of people do it. Um, I never do. And I don't know why, I just never gotten into the habit of it. It's never seemed like it was um, something that I, it wasn't what I learned when I first did it. So maybe that's a big part of it. Oh. 
Um, would you suggest going out the same time every day, painting same scene for a few days uh, to, or so to get faster? Um, I don't know what if I'd suggest that or not. I, I, I would suggest going out and seeing what you're capable of. Like, like if you have three hours to paint something, which, which I think is an accurate kind of idea, that's actually a pretty long time. Like my thought is I would just try to live within that realm and say, okay, you know what? I've got three hours. Let's go do this. Um, and then, you know, if you find that you're a painter that that's way too fast for you or something like that, it feels super uncomfortable and you really don't want to do it. And, you know, like it's miserable for you, then go, you know, change, do something a little slower, set yourself up on a painting, you know, and do several days at the same place. But my suggestion would be just get out and start and then kind of see where you're at because it does um there's so many different ways that you can go about things that um you'll find a different answer from from probably anybody that you ask um about anything related to art let alone plein air painting so but mostly like really people are always asking me what what easel should i buy what what should i get especially when it comes to plein air painting i think because they've never a lot of people haven't done it or you know they don't really know what to get and but it's really hard to tell somebody this is the plein air easel you should get because i don't know what you want to do I only know what I do. And so your experience out there and like, do you want to stand when you're painting or do you want to sit when you're painting? I always stand. So I have an, a setup that works for me with my preferences, but it, it just might not be your preferences. And I feel like I, if there was a place to rent easels, that'd be what I'd suggest is to rent something, rent, rent your equipment before you make a purchase. And that's not really a, an option so much, but you might be able to borrow something from a friend. If you know a friend who is an artist, um, you may be able to do something like that. Um, but mostly I just think you kind of have to go out and go for it and just go do something and see what happens, you know, did it go the way that you thought it was going to go? Was it, was it easy? Was it hard? Was it awful? Was it okay? You know, um, you'll discover in your first go at it, you'll discover a lot. And, you know, most of the time, if you've got a, You know, like if you if you have some sort of uh, setup that you purchased, um, you know, um, you might be able to return it if you've, you know, purchased it fairly recently. Um, but that's kind of my suggestion is get out and try. And in trying, you'll probably you'll probably discover quite a bit about it in that very, very first session, you know, like, whoops, this, I'm kind of messed up here with the placement of some of this, but maybe it, maybe it'll look okay. Um, I'm not gonna worry about changing it right yet. And you can see I'm, that's not a very warm color, but it's, it's considerably warmer than most of the stuff that's in the painting. <laughs> so it really looks quite red and quite uh, you know, colorful. So I'm actually gonna start bringing in a little bit more color in some of these other places um, because 
so far the painting has been very muted and it's fine. But like I was saying before, I do tend to exaggerate colors a little bit. And um, I think it could be kind of nice to bring in a little bit of an exaggerated um, color palette in here. And so you can see I've kind of mixed up a little bit of a yellow, blue kind of mix here. So we'll see what we can do with this and see if we can get a little bit more, a little bit more color in here. But again, this is, I've stuck with the color pretty much as it, as it was up until now. And if you go look again at that, that one that I already did, you see that I don't really vary that much from what the, what the scene had. And when I'm in the studio, even, even though it's, I'm trying to kind of get the, get the essence of it. And we're talking about all this plein air stuff. It's for whatever reason, it's like, I feel like uh, my, my internal artist is more key, keen, I guess you could say on, on changing things up or doing something a little different. And um, so we're coming right down to the crunch time. I've got about just a couple more minutes here and then we're gonna, gonna wrap it up. And I wanna say thanks to, uh, of course, Blick, for uh, allowing me to do the demo. It's been fun to be here with you all. And I uh, also wanna thank you guys for coming and hanging out for a little while. And if you want to uh, hang out with me anymore, you've got a couple great opportunities coming up. One, if you're not um, part of this already, we have on an Acrylic University site, we've got something called the miniature painting challenge and that is starting its next round on june 4th just next friday so that's a super 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 cool thing to be part of it's 52 small doable lessons that you can um you can do in about 30 minutes and it's it's a really fun community people are um, in there every week posting their paintings and stuff like that so that's a really fun thing and then in a little while we're going to open up our our membership again uh, but that's not going to be actually until september so but this has been a blast. I've had a lot of fun. You can see now that we're starting to get a little bit more color in here and some stuff like that. Um, and I've got about one minute left and then we're gonna be wrapping this up. And if you follow me on Instagram, Facebook or something like that, um, I'll try to post this picture, at least in a story, if not on my main Instagram. Uh, and if you want to come back and see what it ends up looking like at the end of the painting, I will do that. Okay, so it is time to say goodbye, everybody. Thank you so much. Make sure that you pay attention to Blick Art Materials Facebook page, to the uh, this group where you're uh, watching right now, or the YouTube where you're watching to see more future live events, uh, all sorts of demonstrations, all the good stuff. Blick Art Materials is an amazing, incredible resource for you if you are creative and you want to grow in your artistic 
uh, abilities and you want to have good resources to learn from and to uh, be able to use. So thank you again for being here. On behalf of Blick, I'm Jed Dorsey and uh, just want to say thanks and have a good time. We'll see you next time.